Okay, well, we're here today on, thankfully, quite a nice day uh, for what I think is rather special because I have with us Owen Smith, who, for his Duke of Edinburgh volunteering, spent many evenings from July through till November yes. um, up and down this stretch, probably a kilometre and a half, um, with his bat detector uh, and discovering that we have seven species of bats um, inhabiting along here and he wrote us a splendid report uh, which is available to anybody who wants it thanks to Owen with supervision and help from his father who's an ecologist and there we have his Duke of Edinburgh certificate uh, for what for him was I think a super project but for us was an absolutely wonderful project because also um, Chase Ecology, uh, Owen's father's business, has donated us five bat boxes and we're going to put up a couple um, along the stretch under Owen's direction as to height and direction um, in the next hour or so. So essentially we walked all the way from somewhere over there at London Road all the way to the end over here just by the A38 and we used bat detectors to record what species of bats there were and we wrote them down and there's about six segments where we tried to figure out what the most prominent species of bat were in those segments and we're going to accordingly put the bat boxes where we saw the most bats. So these boxes would be about two or three metres up into a tree and would be facing anywhere between south and west for mid-hibernation months. We decided to help the uh, Litchfield Hampton Canal Trust and at the time it was brilliant because Owen had got to select some kind of voluntary subject for his Duke of Edinburgh award so we decided to tie the two together um, and it's been a fantastic project. We've, we're also going to do some local work with the scout group I believe where we're going to run a few bat walks then today we're going to put two or three bat boxes in some of the trees there are some more bat boxes to go in different areas then what we'll do as an organization chase ecology will come back over the next two or three years and we'll do some constant monitoring of the boxes to see what species are using and hopefully they are using them so a lot of the the habitat the woodland habitat doesn't offer a, a massive amount of daytime roosting features. Uh, most of the bats we recorded seem to have been coming in from the wider environment but using the waterway sections that have been introduced for feeding. Um, so the point, the point of putting the bat boxes in is to give them a little bit more local roosting habitat. The bat box then slides onto there, then another yeah. screw in the top and it stops kids from coming along poking the bottom and the falling out of the tree, which they will do. Yeah. Stormed out by bird boxes. You could put it on that one here. Okay. Yeah, pretty much facing in this direction. Put it probably just just above where that limb's kicking out. That'd be yeah, absolutely that's fine. Be there. Yeah, that'd be fine. Say put the other two just on this section, probably down by where the bench is there or something like that, two either side of it. There's a load of stainless steel screws in there. Oh, okay, um, lovely. Use those because it stops them killing the trees and stuff there anyway, they're quite good. There's, there's barn owl um, wall side, but I've never seen any barn owl on there. But I thought, well, if you want, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to get a few barn owl boxes and lovely. put them up in here. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Barn owls kicking in there and stuff Wonderful. like that. Normally, um, south's the best position. If you were doing, say, one box, you'd put put them in a south south position. If you've got multiple boxes, um, I normally go anywhere between east east round to west, purely because you would take me like that heat off the sun on them. Um, although there's nothing wrong with putting them in a north facing direction uh, without any kind of like heat on them because they will start to tend to use them in the winter as well then. Um, 
see where this little limb's sticking out? Yeah. Just above that. is um, for the bats to hibernate. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, it's a while since I read your report, but meant to read through it again this morning, but didn't quite make it. And um, my recollection is you found quite a few species of bats yeah. along the stretch. The most common um, of the bats was pipistrelle. Pipistrelle is the most common, is it? Yes, okay. along this stretch. It is. Right. Yeah. Um, and meiosis. Okay. Um, and I know when we talked before, and your report refers to commuting bats. Yeah. Which um, amused me and Peter a great deal because. You know, we reckon there's bats flying along here with their briefcases and bowler hats on. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so commuting means coming from the wider environment because one thing we noticed is that they weren't actually emerging. They were kind of using this as a runway, as a road. Oh, OK. Um, and at night, though, obviously there were a lot of insects that they eat, so it was almost like a buffet for them. Always oh, so. Almost like a buffet for them. Oh, really? <laughs> um, and... Um, so yeah, the, the main takeaway is that they were coming from the wider environment rather than emerging from just this one. So oh, they were okay. passing. Sociable bats. So explain that a bit, will you? Um, so sociable bats, sort of um, bats sort of arriving together. In a little group? So in a matter of speaking, yeah. So they're the partying ones, are they? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many evenings you spent. It was quite a lot and, and quite late into the evening, wasn't it? When Yeah, it was, um, I think, from... Well, we would sometimes arrive here at times like 10. Yeah. Um, but most of the time it was from about 7 to 8 and then ending at 10 or 11. So it's quite, you know, a long time you've spent down here over quite a lot of evenings, as I recall. And certainly, uh, was it from um, July through to November? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of hard work you did for us. Yeah. Um, and fresh air. And you covered the stretch from... Um, the A38, yeah. down at, at uh, what we call the Tamworth Narrows, um, all the way through to Gallows Wharf. Uh, yeah, to London Road, yeah. So Part all the way there. along yeah. Tamworth Road. So that's a, it's a fair old stretch to be going up and down with your bat detectors and making notes or recordings. Um, did you enjoy it? Definitely, yeah. You it was, did? It was nice, yeah, because it was nice sort of almost seeing the project and yeah. also being able to work on it as well. And also spending time in the fresh air. Well done. Absolutely super. Thank you. No, thank you, Owen. <laughs> and, um, I mean, you've done such a good job for us, of course, that you're now lined up to take a party of scouts yeah. um, for Seventh Litchfield Scout Group that we work quite closely with from the canal. So, um, thanks very much. Thank you.